from Sonic the Hedgehog 2 garnering over 400 million, let me say that again, 400 million plus at the box office and smashing records to become the highest grossing video game movie domestically, even beating out Pokemon. And that's f Pokemon, an IP with a capital Kajiga! Kajiga! Stay with me. Kajiga, Kajiga, Kajiga. Sonic Prime getting all the hype and attention from us at the community and Netflix themselves to the amount of love shared on social media and now this? 2022 has really been the year of Sonic support. I guess you can say us fans are truly undefeatable. Um, <clears throat> Shut up. Hey everyone, I am Blue Stride and today I'm here to discuss the perhaps somewhat expected but nevertheless pleasant news of Frontiers' recent sales report. Now Sonic Frontiers has been the talk of the town even over a month post its release having garnered the most attention and praise for any mainline Sonic game in a very long time, not including Sonic Mania as that is not mainline, it's not surprising that such attention and praise would also reflect on its earnings. Sega's official Twitter account a few days ago broke out that Frontiers has sold over 2.5 million copies worldwide as of December 13, 2022 taking into account both digital and physical copies purchased. This makes it the fastest selling Sonic game in the entirety of the franchise, overtaking Lost World, Mania, and well the less said about you the better. Ow! Did you guys feel that? The edge! Ow! Total sales numbers in just about a single month! For comparison, Sonic Generations, which is arguably the best received Sonic game since Frontiers, Though I feel like that's pretty safe to say. I don't know, maybe there is a really passionate Team Sonic Racing fan out there. Put your goddamn hand down. Made 1.85 million in a similar time frame. If that time frame was a whole ass year. And everyone loved that game. Even Donkey. Now Frontiers is a bit of a different story with him, but to each their own. Now yes, this is no God of War Ragnarok which released the day after Frontiers and amassed 5.1 million copies within its first week, goddamn. But for the Sonic franchise, this is paramount. As in, it is monumental for him, not, not the guys who make his movies. Now, it's no big revelation to say that Sega was placing a lot of chips on the table for Frontiers and its success. The budget, bigger. The development time, larger. And the push for it, so much harder. And it ended up being so good because of it. Don't take that out of context, alright? If Frontiers turns out to be a disappointment, or dare be it a flop, Sonic would be, and no, I'm not gonna be one of those YouTubers that say dead. I mean, he survived a lot worse, and then survived it again, and then again, and then somewhat again, though you, for whatever reason, actually sold somewhat well. Sonic would have been in a very unclear state of what Sega and Sonic Team would do with him in the future, since they were really banking on this being the third generation of Sonic. Though I feel like you're lumping Adventure Sonic and Modern Era Sonic a bit too much together there and that's not even counting pre-boost and post-boost modern games as two categories but I get what you mean. Sonic Team even pushed Sega who wanted this game to come out in 2021 despite everything that happened with you know what <coughs> to delay it to 2022 and oh boy am I glad they did. Because this game, while not super buggy or broken, still has a few technical problems. And the pop-ins are a soft horror experience in and of itself to how much they can just jump out of you out of nowhere. And to think what this game would have been like in 2021. Oh, I'm having flashbacks. I'm having flashbacks! But it didn't come to that. And thankfully, we got something much better because of it. Hopefully Sega now sees and realizes the good that can come when you let its developers take more time to make a game. Now is it to say I believe we are going to be waiting over 5 years for the next mainline installment? No, once again I believe the- <coughs> oh,
<laughs> played a big role in the wait between forces and frontiers. And we still got other titles in between such as Sonic and Mario at the Olympic Games as technically Sega are the ones who developed those. But I do believe that mainline games are going to be baking in the oven for a lot longer now because it yields much better cakes when it does. And I do love me some cakes. Yeah, that brother's starving. But there will still probably be another spin-off game made by another third-party publisher in between this and Sonic Frontiers 2, the Titaning or whatever like we had with Team Sonic Racing and Sonic Prime Premier Simulator. And we already have so many other things going on right now, right now, such as Sonic Prime or things to look forward to, such as the Paramount Knuckles show as part of the SCU or Sonic Movie 3 with Shadow taking Sonic to the ICU. And that's not even beginning to delve into all the Frontiers DLC we'll be receiving next year. And if the several rumors and leaks are to be believed, another 2D mainline Sonic game in the style of Dimps' previous outings with the blue blur. But hey, that's just a rumor. Grains of salt be taken. So besides Sega taking more time to work on each mainline entry and now seeing the positive reception of Frontiers, having it be the fastest selling Sonic game in Japan as well, which is a big deal since that was one of their primary goals with the title, as Sonic in Japan has really been lacking in terms of appeal there for years prior. And that focus to achieve Japanese popularity really is apparent with just how anime these boss battles can get. Do you feel like me around or am I feeling like... <laughs> Oh, this is just like one of my Japanese animes. And I love it. Is it over? Is it phase three? I mean, why is he side looping? If he picks up the sword. If he picks up the sword. Oh, oh, oh no, oh Sega, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I thought it was all right. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was okay, you know, just okay. Breaking Steam concurrent records and the works, this hopefully means Sega will put a lot more investment into Sonic as a franchise going forward because prior to Frontiers, with most titles released being budgeted ones and the company putting a lot more focus on the Yakuza series, it really seemed like Kazuma was becoming the face of Sega. I mean, Yakuza is awesome. We're finally getting Ishin here in the West, a brand new mainline game in the Like a Dragon saga, and the memes, oh the memes, mwah, are always a treat. But I, for one, will always love the blue blur more. Listen, Kazuma, I... And this game's success will lead Sega to showing more love to him too. Meaning less budgeted work, a more dedicated and expanded team for Sonic Team, and fingers crossed, Adventure 3 becoming that much more of a possibility. We're talking like a whole 4 to now And I don't want to sound crazy 10% chance of it happening Now, I don't want to be one of those YouTubers that constantly no. adventure baits But gosh GD will could darn it If Takashi Izuka keeps on teasing us with the idea again and again and again and again and again I can't help myself if my body busts out a little bit of chaos control at the idea But that is very far future we are talking about here but the third adventure game is always in the mind of every hardcore Sonic fan. Or fourth, I mean, there's a whole conversation with you. I'm not trying to get into it. At least now that is. Future video, who knows? And of course, adventure or really anything in relation to Sonic and the bright future for him is only amplified further when it comes to the success of the intellectual property in other forms of media. So after you've bought what I presume is your 12th copy of Frontiers, go get yourself another copy of Sonic Movie 2. Go get yourself on the IDW greatness. I mean, you have him to thank for all the not Pontaf level of writing here. Watch Sonic Prime if you haven't already. This time, not on Roblox, have some standards for chaos sake. Get your Paramount subscription because the knuckles in your wall here wants you to. And pre-order your ticket right now for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. What's that? You said you can't? Well, that sounds like a f excuse. 
fix that. But that is all I have to say for this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Sonic's financial and critical success finally meeting somewhat eye to eye and what do you think this will spell for the series moving forward also to the real striders who actually listen to this part of the video let me know what your favorite part of frontiers is and you can't say the boss battles because that's a given and you can't say cyberspace because you and i both know you're f***ing lying i would love to hear it all and as always thank you so much for watching make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so if you enjoyed or do enjoy what i produce and hopefully i will see you at another time in another video but in all the meanwhile don't let your stride die Bye bye okay i think we're at the Real point talk. where we need to admit that this was never really a great franchise nope. oh, oh shut the f up and that we, they, we keep trying and trying and trying to find this thing that was never really actually there. Sonic was never good. Sonic, Sonic was, was never good. good. Sonic, Sonic was never good. Sonic, Sonic was never good. good. Sonic yes. was never good. If you disagree, you can call the cops. 911, what's your emergency? We're gonna get a lot of hate. The other, <laughs> no. You're under arrest, Nimrod. Keep it warm at night. Sonic YouTubers, clip this out. I will hold that L. I was wrong. Sonic is good. Sonic has been great, and Sonic one day will be tremendous. Oh, ho, ho, it's magic, you know. Never believe it's not. It's, it's Crash Bandicoot that's never been. Oh, okay, <laughs> here we go. Crash Bandicoot, you have really just been shitting this up for 25 years. You almost had it. But then again, it's IGN. What was I expecting? Oh, that's right, absolutely nothing.